The Saudi royal family are to be the subject of a new tell-all British film. The movie will focus on the late King Fahd, who ruled Saudi Arabia for 23 years, and it will apparently feature scenes of him gambling and using drugs. But most controversially, it also includes the story of a woman who claims to be the former king's secret wife. Jan Anhab, who's a Palestinian-born Christian, says she converted to Islam in 1968 to marry the monarch. She's been telling us how they met and how they eventually became separated. There was a big party for uh, Palestinians and Lebanese for, uh, for Christmas party. The prince at that time was the Minister of Interior. He was invited and that's how we met. We had a lovely life the first uh, two years. It was very, very beautiful life. But then the third year was quite uh, tragic because it was taken seriously and his brothers got involved and uh, it wasn't really nice. I was deported. His brothers uh, uh, who were grooming him to become a king um, did not accept uh, him to have a Palestinian Christian wife. I was deported without his knowledge. Janan Harper successfully sued the late king's son, and he now has to pay her 20 million pounds in damages and property, upholding an agreement that was struck with the king before his death. The prince has until the end of March to appeal, but the Saudis have a record of tricky relations with the British legal system. This week, one sheikh managed to escape divorce payments after he was appointed a UN envoy by a small Caribbean nation. That means he gets diplomatic immunity. And a month ago, a Saudi millionaire was cleared of raping a teenager after he claimed he may have penetrated her accidentally after tripping and falling on her. Janan Harb says that she turned to the media to try and make the Saudi royal family face up to its responsibilities. Every time you confront the Saudis, they tell you, instead of asking and finding the truth, they say, oh, maybe she was a prostitute, maybe she is a money digger. They will know a lot of truth in that book. It, is in, it would be very interesting. At least they would know why I wrote it. And since he didn't take responsibility for his father's reputation, here we go. He has to take responsibility. He bears, he bears the blame himself now. The United Nations has exonerated a whistleblower who revealed sexual abuse by UN peacekeepers. Last year, he passed documents on cases of abuse to the Central African Republic to French authorities. Four underage girls say they were sexually abused by UN peacekeepers. The UN has launched an investigation. and angered and ashamed I am uh, by recurrent reports over the years of sexual exploitation and abuse by UN forces. These allegations came to light in 2014 following claims that international troops serving as peacekeepers in the CAR had sexually abused a number of young children in exchange for food or money. 